Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this Red Gaming Total video, we're going to be discussing Ryzen performance, specifically relating to BIOS updates. A few days ago, I put out a video which was entitled How to Get the Most Performance for Gaming out of your Ryzen processor. And of course, one of the things I suggest is, is keep your BIOS up to date. But even I was not prepared for the huge jump in performance I received by simply updating my BIOS just recently on the X Power Titanium. So, just for groundwork, I have been reviewing the X Power Titanium from MSI, and it's actually the final day that I have the board today. And so, just uh, last night, I decided to check, and there was another BIOS update, so I wanted to do that just so I could finish off some overclocking results, and I was trying to get the RAM a little bit higher, and just, you know, general tweaking. Well, turns out it did a lot more than that. Um, just for clarification's sake, I have changed nothing else in the system. So, for example, the NVIDIA drivers are still the same, the clock speed of the RAM is still the same, the CPU is still the same. Uh, I am using the overclocked um, performance of the CPU in this particular video, which you'll see the results in just a moment, simply because I have more of those and I have to retest in a minute the stock performance of the CPU. But, suffice to say, the performance um, difference can't be explained away by something else I've changed. The performance is essentially, you know, um, pretty pretty much relating to BIOS as far as I can tell. And the performance difference is huge. Um, how much of a difference? Well, you're looking at around 90 frames a second previous in Rise of the Tomb Raider, a 1080p with a GTX 1080, and going up to 110, 115 frames per second after the BIOS update. And we'll go through the, um, as I said, benchmarks in just a moment. Now I also want to address a couple of other questions I've had. Will I be testing this particular board with an AMD uh, graphics card? No, because as I said, the board has to go back to um, MSI tomorrow, but I do have my own X370 board with an Asus one, so I'll be testing that with a couple of um, AMD graphics cards, including, I don't know if I can reach it, he says stretching including one of these ones, which is an XFX one. I don't know if you can see that well on camera. So I'll test it with that and try and do some crossfire results as well. And uh, currently we are using one of these MSI graphics cards. I have no idea if you can see that properly. And I'll try and do some uh, SLI testing as well with Ryzen. But with all of that said, let's start. So, as I said, this was the last day I had with this board, and I just decided last minute to start uh, tweaking the voltages I was putting in for the 3.8 GHz overclock that I was using for the stock cooler. And I just so happened to load Rise of the Tomb Raider and run that, and I noticed a major performance advantage. You can see you're looking at around 115-ish, 118 frames a second. I did manage 119 once with one run, but I decided to keep 115 in this particular video because it was the most consistent. And that is a startling increase of around the 90-ish frames a second of the old. Hitman also exhibits much the same performance. Now, I won't bore you by constantly reading out the performance numbers on screen because you can quite easily see those yourself. But my findings are pretty obvious. Certain games, for example Rise of the Tomb Raider Hitman, see a noticeable increase in frame rate. Those are titles which you would naturally assume Ryzen would do pretty well on. And other titles which Ryzen was already performing pretty respectively on, for example, oh I don't know, Far Cry uh, Primal, it continues to perform roughly on par. So in other words, as far as I can tell, I have not lost any performance on the games that I'm running. And in addition to that, um, synthetic benchmarks, I've run a couple, um, for example, Cinebench and CPU-Z, they are performing once again roughly how they were before. Batman Arkham Knight, for example, 145, 144 frames a second, depending on the new or old BIOS. That's within the same realms of performance as a KB Lake 7600K or something similar. This is fantastic news for owners of Ryzen or for those looking to upgrade to Ryzen at some point in the not too distant future. Essentially what we're looking here at here is a major increase in performance thanks to a BIOS revision and perhaps this will continue in the future. It's also going to be rather fascinating to see how this trickles down to other processors. While I do believe that the 1700 is possibly the best value out of the Ryzen 7s, 
The Ryzen 5s possibly offer an even better uh, price point um, for consumers who are primarily focused on gaming. And if this level of performance is consistent, and we will do some more testing when we switch back to our Asus board in the next couple of days, this is going to be an absolute phenomenal processor for folks who are looking to perhaps do a little bit of light streaming and gaming, or perhaps just focus primarily on gaming, but have eyes set on the future when games are going to become increasingly multi-threaded. In fact, with our interview with NVIDIA's Neil Trevitt, who of course also is the head of the Kronos Group, we'll be putting that up in the next couple of days, he did actually say that one of the benefits of multi-core processors in the future is that games are going to become a lot richer. This is not just something to do with... Um, Oh, I don't know, extra foliage, but also artificial intelligence, and the game worlds are going to become greater, more richer, and of course is also going to translate rather well to virtual reality. Okay, so the benchmarks are over, and now you're probably wondering what my thoughts and conclusions are. Well, the most obvious one is that not all games see a performance increase. For example, um, you have titles like Hitman, and Rise of the Tomb Raider, which saw an absolute massive spike in performance. As I said, uh, now we're looking at over 100 frames per second in both games. On the other hand, other titles, for example, uh, Batman, very slight increase at 1080p, whereas other games like Ashes of the Singularity, it's pretty much within margin of error. We're talking about the base game, by the way, not Escalation for the sake of this video. Um, Escalation, however, has seen its own patch, which naturally increases performance by about 25-30-ish percent, but that's slightly outside the topic of this video. So, I'm going to address the demographic of people who are wondering if they should buy Ryzen for the purpose of gaming on the back of these results. Well, here's my thoughts on that. If you are only gaming and you are not in a rush, wait a couple of weeks, wait, you know, a month, and, you know, if you can, and then see how it goes. On the other hand, if you already have, uh, sorry, if you, you know, just want to buy a system right now, I, I don't really feel that, you know, Ryzen is going to be getting worse in performance. It seems that BIOS updates are increasing things, and Robert Halleck has also mentioned on, I believe it's the Community AMD um, blogs, that they will be releasing another BIOS update, which will be available in, I believe it's like early to mid-April. So it'll start shipping out to motherboard vendors, and then obviously it's down to them to incorporate that into their BIOS, and then give that to us. But that update is going to further improve things, uh, for example, with HPET and a few other bits and pieces. So in other words, AMD are working on things, and hopefully that will improve. So... If you are considering a processor for anything with gaming plus other stuff, so for example, let's say you're running virtual machines, perhaps doing a little bit of photo editing, image manipulation, 3D rendering, uh, video production, audio editing, development, whatever, and gaming is also like, you know, the other usage of the machine, in my personal opinion, I would highly suggest a Ryzen processor. Now that's not to say that Intel CPUs don't have their price, because they do. For example, the fact that uh, Ryzen has lower clock cores and not as many threads, uh, sorry, and, but more threads, means that in uh, applications which have uh, fewer threads available and really push high clock speeds as like the most important criteria for its performance, then perhaps, you know, you might want a cable egg based CPU in that particular instance. But overall, Ryzen is definitely an impressive processor. For those wondering, this particular CPU is a Ryzen 7 1700, and as I mentioned, you can hit about 3.8, 4 gigahertz on this particular CPU. I'm hitting 3.8 right now, and that is with a stock Wraith cooler. That's pretty impressive, to be honest. So I don't really feel that, um, you know, an 1800X necessarily is worth the extra cash. I'm not saying it's a bad processor by any stretch of the imagination. Just simply saying that if gaming is your kind of thing and you're more on a budget, then you really shouldn't feel bad about buying a 1700. For the record, I have a 1700X in my own personal rig, and its performance is pretty much identical unless you're starting to really overclock um, compared to the 1700. One final thing, um, if you're 
obviously really wanting to push the clock speed up on Ryzen, then the default caller is probably not enough and you probably want to go with either a decent AIO or possibly even a full water cooling loop. But obviously that's somewhat outside the remit of this video. But with all of that said, hopefully you have enjoyed this video. Um, normal stuff, like, share, subscribe, all of that jazz. And I shall see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.